and Jackson Page. They're going to play each other in the first semi-final tomorrow. Hossein Vafai, Ding Junhui is live on Discovery+. Plus. We're going to be focusing, though, on the return of Neil Rob who has been missing in action, really, the last season. But he's back centre stage against... He's just sorting out his chair and everything in the corner there. Because this is a big match. It's a big few days, potentially, if he can... Won't have to go to qualifying for the World Championship. He needs to win the tournament for that to happen. Otherwise, he will be... Crucible. So, a big match. And he's hoping there'll be two more big matches to come. Barry Hawkins, always a tough opponent. He's been uh, making his way through on the outside tables this week. But, of course, he's had some good wins there. Not least Stephen Maguire yesterday. Maguire had beaten Luca Brussel. So this, I think, is going to be an interesting one. He won the last meeting, Hawkins, at the Masters two months ago. The overall head-to-head, -head, though, favours Robertson 12-5. There's some big wins there in finals as well. But uh, anyway, in going to enjoy this one in the company of Fergal O'Brien. Hello, Fergal. Hi, David. Yeah, looking forward to this. Two great players coming back into form. Particularly Neil has had a very lean spell for him. Seems to be back to his very best this week. Scoring very heavy, which is a trademark of his game. Yeah, again, he's been mainly on the outside tables, but the, the brakes have been flying in and he's not really been troubled yet. He's seen off his opponents pretty comfortably. This, I think, is a different test, isn't it? It's against another established winner. Terrific pot from Hawkins. The world rankings are a little bit deceptive. Coming in, Hawkins is 18, Robertson is 15. But in fact, because Barry Hawkins is guaranteed the Tour Championship, he's also going to be in the top 16. Whereas Robertson, of course, his points coming off from winning the Tour Championship two years ago, he's going to be outside. So you'd rather be rankings-wise in, in Barry Hawkins' spot right now. Yeah, I think I speak on behalf of all qualifiers that we want Neil Robertson to win this tournament. <laughs> Nobody wants to play him in the English Institute of Sport. Best of 19 to get to the Crucible. And on the other side, Six. if he was a qualifier and got through, no top 16 seed would want to play him first round at the Crucible. Well, it was a chance to get going, but he's missed that. Yeah, Hawkins actually was in that position last year. He had to go to the qualifiers and he didn't get through. Jack Jones beat him. It's a different feel when you've not been there for a long time. And there's a different feel to this event today, isn't there? Because we're down, down to two tables. And, of course, backstage, there'll be far fewer players around. And it's just a reminder that, you know, we've reached the real business end now of this, this big tournament. Nice opening pot there from Neil. Just coming down, just to have a look where exactly he'd like to be. Is the red he can get on? Might even gamble potentially going into the cluster reds below the pink. Could stay down the right hand side, get close to where the black is, there would be a red available. Four. Must can only presume that that red in the middle goes. Must be tight though if he's having another look at it, considering he just played for it. <laughs> you can see there. Does go certainly into the left hand side of the pocket. Coming around 
the other side of the pocket to get a better view. It's amazing to think it's his first ranking quarter final of the season, Neil Robertson, and his first since December 2022 at the English Open. So it's not just that the points have come off, that's part of it. The problem is they've not been going back on. So this is kind of last chance saloon time. But if he won it, he'd be in the Tour Championship. And suddenly all that confidence that he would get, he'd be a massive threat again, of course, in Sheffield. So this is really is a huge few days for him. allowing the referee to get this pink back into position. Yeah, normally coming into this part of the season, Neil's in great form winning tournaments. He's seen for a few years in a row, with the exception of Ronnie O'Sullivan. He was favoured for the World Championships with the form he'd shown, but that never materialised at all. But yeah, maybe if he can come Eleven. in, has that perfect balance between having form, but also being fresh, he'd be very dangerous. I think attitude is so important, isn't it? And, you know, there's no point sort of being down in the dumps about it. Treat it as a challenge. We know he's good enough to win any tournament. Regardless of sort of recent form. Yeah, there was a few years ago where he, he was out of the top 16. He missed out on the Masters. That seemed to galvanise him again. And certainly the last few weeks, he's been saying all the right things about being more ruthless, working harder trying to leave no stone unturned in his preparation. Yeah, I mean, when he when he dropped out the 16, as you say, he actually won the next tournament, didn't he, the Scottish Open? The very next tournament he won. So uh, that shows, I think, something about his attitude. 20. Just looking to settle in here and try and win this frame with authority and punish the miss from a Hawkins. Of course, he was first in, missed that red. Now, is he actually on one here? He's trying to open more reds up. that very well just getting the pop but also managed to avoid the blue and still be high on it can you feel one good position shot here get perfect on the red could be decisive in winning the frame little shot there playing that gentle cannon gives him options of a few reds at his very best fluent heavy scorer 41 and at certain times get, get himself slightly bogged down, trying to control things. But usually when his average shot, 21, 22 seconds, is when he's at his best. 42. Yeah, five centuries already in the tournament. He has such authority at the table, I think, when he's at his best. He looks like it's kind of right, my table my terms and I think we have missed that actually this season there's been a lot of interesting sort of subplots going on but we've kind of missed him I think put it this way Fergal if he ends up winning the world championship no one will remember the, the sort of the months of, of struggle that, that have come before will they yeah exactly I mean I think in other years when he's won numerous tournaments when you look back at the season he's still 
maybe went back to the World Championships, how disappointing his performance was. He seems a lot of the years went in with a lot of expectancy. Probably was talking a good game himself, bigging up his own chances. But as I said, it never really materialised. And certainly his World Championship record for him, player of his class. It's hard to say it's quite poor, but should be a lot better, you would think. And there's been numerous people that went on to win the World Championship following on from a poor season. I said maybe with a point to prove and also been a little bit fresher. 70 days is a long, hard slog. You need to be not just playing well, but mentally at your very best. 55. Well, we saw the thin blue line there. He didn't have much angle on that blue. Beautiful queuing. 56. Yeah, good signs there. First, he had no hesitancy in playing it. Obviously, he was a lot closer to the cushion than he would have liked. But straight down, stroked it in, dead straight. Well, he's looking good to punish the Hawkins miss thoroughly. And these Six opening frames. frames, they can be important because the players are sort of sizing each other up. Wondering how he's feeling today, how he's looking. Well, Robertson already is looking very good. Sixty-four. So that missed red. Looks very costly because this next ball should secure Neil Robertson the opening frame. He's 79th ranking quarter final, playing for a 50th semi final place. 70. He actually won the first ever World Open. It was played in Scotland back in 2010. Slightly different format, but he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final. 71. So now try and make a century at 32 this season. As I say, five in this tournament. And it'll be another one for the list. We've had 85 at the venue. <laughs> and this is only day five. Yeah, the standard and quality of break building this week, this week has been phenomenal. I think yesterday in the first hour's play, the four tables have been nine centuries. And again, as you said, Neil, already had 32 centuries this season. The vast majority of players that have ever played in the Tour haven't had that in the season. He's still obviously tournaments to go. And you would describe it as a poor season for him, which shows even when he's not at his best, still a very heavy scorer. Just glass while has slipped out of the winning habit. Well, it's a great start, this. He looks really good here. And this pink will be to street. Great signs for Neil Robertson as he attempts to go all the way in Yushan and completely change his circumstances, avoid those dreaded qualifiers. And also remind everybody on the tour, not that they need reminding, but remind everyone what a fantastic player he is and what a threat he will be for the rest of the season. One 
120. So Mill Robertson, man on a mission this week. And if he carries on like, that, like this, he could well be the last man standing. What a wonderful break. It came from a Hawkins oh, miss. And Neil Robertson stepped in with a 1-2-7 clearance. So the Australian off and running here at the World Open, leading Barry Hawkins 1-0. So Barry Hawkins with already a little to think about. He was in, he missed a red. Neil Robertson made 127 to take the first frame of the quarterfinal. Ding John Wee leads Hussain Vafai 1-0 on the other table. It was actually noticeable during that break by Neil how comfortable Barry was in the chair. You just got a sense he just fully expected Neil to capitalise on it. He's going to have to be at his very best today if Neil's going to be playing like that. The second frame, Barry Hawkins to break. Yes, there have been a few flashbacks, I think, to some of the matches they've had, a couple of finals, the Masters two years ago, the Players' Championship just after that, Robertson was outstanding against him both times. But as I say, Hawkins won the most recent at the Masters. I mean, that, that is <laughs> some arena that Alexandra Palace to beat anybody. So he's got good memories in recent times of playing him. He's close. Oh, it holds on. <laughs> Makes a difference. Yeah, he's actually quite fortunate there in playing that safety off the red close to the pack. Caught it too thick. That's why he clipped the other red. Again, ball in hand. You'd have fancied Barry potting along red. As it is, he's in a little bit of trouble himself just to back down the balk. Played a good shot, playing that kind of shot. The blue always seems a massive obstacle. Just got a glancing blow on it. Shorter pace there from Neil, just leaving it in the bulk line. And on the table, you'd fully expect Barry to pot this. There was a little bit of pressure on it. Felt sure if he missed it, he would leave a chance for Neil. He's seen how well he's playing. Feels like a missed opportunity that for Robertson. He played so well in frame one. He's, you almost just give him those. I mean, obviously, he still needed potting. Not quite there. Yeah, you, you got a sense Barry feared the worst in his chair. A little bit of a let off, particularly Neil Potter. Perfect on the black. Yeah, tricky little red he had there, Barry. Again, trying to hold. Just a little gentle screw back for off that red, trying to hold for the black. Do a lot wrong and very quickly it feels like the match can slip away from you. One. 
Nine. Neil, a great champion, great winner. He'll be aware of the significance of these moments. Eleven. Ideally, if he could win this frame again with another one visit. Twelve. Putting massive pressure on Barry. Well, I noticed on uh, Neil's social media, he was, he'd was he been to the Snooker and Billiards Museum here in New Sham, which looks fantastic, actually. 19. And, of course, he's part of that history. He's the most successful non-British player in the game's history. He's had challenges that 20. some of the guys from the UK haven't had in terms of relocating and sort of leaving his family and all the rest of it, making sacrifices, and he's overcome them. And what a career he's had, regardless of the problems more recently in terms of form. Form will come and go, and it's happened to lots of players down the years. 27. But what a great record he's already got to sort of reassure himself almost, you know, looking in recent times as well, that this is just a blip and that the trophies will be coming in again. Thirty-five. Not much angle on this red and quite close to it. Could be hard sometimes to generate that little bit of power to get up for the blue or bulk. Get them so close together. Thirty-six. Always a shot that requires smooth queuing, and he did it beautifully. Again, back in prime position. Forty-one. Yeah, I mean, you know, you hear talk of the zone, whatever that means. He's in it right now, just just playing snooker as 42. he to the standard that he can, which is about as high as you can. Just that one miss from him in this frame. It was that red to the green pocket, but it's out of his mind now. He wasn't punished for it. And that's why we highlighted at the start. <coughs> 49. This lead for Neil. It's not so much a question of whether it'll affect Barry mentally. Just if he was to get a chance. The problem is he just mightn't get a chance. Neil is up and running. Very hard to stop. 50. You feel not just each frame, but the start of each frame is going to be crucial. Barry's going to have to get in first. And if he gets in first, you feel he's going to have to more or less win the frame in that video. 57. Nearly feels this week there's been a tournament within a tournament of who can get the most centuries. Yeah, I mean, the conditions have been good. The, the pockets Five. at times have looked generous, but also it's, it's the, I think, the cloth as well, the way the ball's open. They all seem to be just available. And also these guys are really good. That's the other thing to remember. We've seen, for all the talk of the pockets, we've seen a few balls missed already in this match. Anyway, I don't think he's going to miss this one, so this is for 2-0. Very impressive. Seventy-one. Yeah, any table with a brand new cloth on. Certainly, first couple of days always plays that little bit more generous. 
pockets a bit more accepting. But again, these are still a good bit smaller than your average club table. Well, the irony is we had the match with Trump and Wilson earlier, the two Very leading nice. century makers this season. You thought it'd be a feast of breaks. There weren't any centuries. <laughs> That's just how it goes sometimes. Might have another one here, though. 80. Yeah, Neil's one of those players that c continues his concentration even when the frame is long one. <laughs> Wants to add another century to his long list. And of course, did that fantastic in 2013, 14. Had over 100 centuries, which is remarkable. 87. Yeah, and that'll annoy him. Even though he's made a, a fine break of 87, he wanted another century. But the bottom line is he's queuing very nicely. And Neil Robertson, in half an hour, has taken a 2-0 lead over Barry Hawkins in this quarterfinal. Just waiting for Neil Robertson to return. But what a start from him. Breaks of 127 and 87 to lead Barry Hawkins. 2-0 in this World Open quarter-final. On the other table, Ding Junhui has just gone 2-0 up against Hossein Vafai. He's had breaks of 73 and 74, although Vafai was in front in that uh, second frame. So Ding going along very nicely this week. Of course, he had that match on, on day one with Zach Surety when Zach had the 147, but uh, beat Sean Murphy very impressively yesterday. And Ding 2-0 uh, up. And of course, if he does come through, he'll play the winner of this match. John Higgins may be watching, we don't know, but of course he's involved in all this as well because he's 12th on the Tour Championship standings at the moment, top 12 get in on that one year list. So at the moment, well, if a five loses, then John stays 12th. Of course, Robertson, if he won the tournament, or Jackson Page could still overtake him. Now, as we just wait for Neil Robertson, we can just show you the end of that frame on the other table. This is uh, Ding doing the business against the fight. As you can see, he was a long way behind. This is uh, ends up a break of 74, so the fire was close to winning the frame. Ding still needing pink and black at this stage. Excellent safety shot there from Barry. Managed to avoid the ball colours. <laughs> I said in the last frame, not just each frame, but the start of each frame, going to be crucial. Try and get control of it.
Barry's been left a long red to the right corner. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely pot. <laughs> Pressure on it. And also it's been sitting down for the best part of two frames. Yeah, I mean, he's known for being level-headed. Hawkins, he's you know, seen every scenario before, including players playing really well against him early in matches. But if he can put some pressure on by responding in kind, and obviously, you know, Robertson may feel it because he's not been in this position for quite a while deep in a tournament. So it's up to him now. He's earned this chance with the good red to make it pay. Yeah, and if he was in any doubt before the match about how well he would have to play, that's been put to bed by Neil's performance in the first two. That can sometimes help focus the mind. He knows he's going to have to play at his very best. And while that's obviously difficult to do, 14. mentally could sometimes appear easier or there's greater clarity. And he played that shot very well there, catching the pink full in the face. Yeah, of course, uh, Hawkins has been a winner this season. It was uh, early season, back in August, the European Masters, but that was uh, a great way to start the campaign. He dropped out the top 16 at that point. And as I say, even though he's actually back outside now, because he'll be at the Tour Championship with guaranteed points there, he's looking set for a crucible seeding. The rankings used to be simple, didn't they? You just had it for the season, that was it. Now there's <laughs> there's about six or seven different lists to follow and all sorts of subplots, which keeps it very interesting and means there's so much to play for for the players, not just winning a tournament, but the, the spin-offs you get from that. 21. Probably played a great shot and when you put blue a few shots ago, opening them up. When you play that shot, there's always the fear that in playing it, you might tie the black up. That's not the case at all here. Currently available just into one pocket. But he'll be looking for a way just to get that other red to the left of it. 28. Yeah, this is what I was saying on these tables. The balls just seem to spread so nicely. So obviously that gives you every chance of making big breaks. And Hawkins got a golden one here. Yeah, this week I can't remember one frame from the break off where the black was tied up. It just seems for whatever reason this week to always be available right from the start. That just lends itself to open attacking frames. And of course then the quality of the players once the balls are open. Just appears nobody's missing. 37. Well, he's had three centuries uh, in the tournament. And uh, he's one of these players, Hawkins, there's some in the game, let's be honest, if they're not on the main table or, or they haven't been on it for a while, they do sort of make their grievances known. He's not like that at all. You can put him on any table. 42. He'll just play the way he wants to play because he's now centre stage, which is a reminder that we're at a crucial moment in the tournament. Yeah, Barry could never be accused of being a diva, that's for sure. Very level headed guy, very popular on tour. Well, maybe disgusted missing that, absolutely out of nowhere. You can see there by his reaction. Probably unsure how he missed it, but he's so fearful of how costly that could be. Yeah, you just can't afford that. Really, 
in a quarter final against anybody, but certainly not Neil Robertson, who's won the first two frames with big breaks. And he's now going to try and twist the knife as much as possible here. We'll be looking at some point to try and attack those two reds on the right hand side. I feel if he can play a positional shot, 16. probably off the black, leave himself somewhere in between them. And when he lands there, he'd have a choice. 17. Again, if he gets the right angle on the red. On the black cushion, you feel if he plays it slowly, that won't be too much of a problem. Yeah, just come to the crucial part of the break here, how it just goes about getting these last few reds. just to roll this in, leave himself a choice of the two reds. Forty. I'm looking to be high on the black here ideally, give himself a choice of both reds. It's such a key moment in the match, this. Hawkins was looking good, looking to settle in with a nice break of his own. Missed completely out of the blue. Robertson determined to pounce and really punish and take a 3-0 lead in the process. 49. Yeah, had a lovely angle on that red just to roll it in. Again, still low on the black. Same again, just rolled it in for the next red. Ideally into the middle. And again, perfect here and just rolling it in. Go past the blue and go up for a choice of ball colours. That simple black. He feared the worst. 60. He was proved right. Again, the way he's playing. 62. A mistake, particularly a basic one like that, can prove crucial. There's probably times during the season Neil wouldn't have capitalised, but he's back to his very best. Well, it just feels like a long way back from here. It's, you can come back from 3-0 down if there's been three scrappy frames, but 
he's just being punished now for every miss and put it this way he's going to have to win the next frame otherwise it's not going to happen for him 69 yeah neil's not going to come back to him he's going to have to go out and win it somehow but again the issue is not 74. if he takes his chances as much as will he get the chances neil's only going to get stronger and stronger Again, a very Eight. nicely composed break this. He's just stayed in that zone. And it's a frame winning contribution, but this one more significant than the first two because Hawkins. He didn't take it. And Neil Robertson has punished him thoroughly. So Neil Robertson well and truly on top. And in just 45 minutes, he's already two frames away from the semi finals. He leads 3 0. Very Hawkins to break. So 127, 287s as well from Neil Robertson. Some heavy hitting, but part of the problem has been Hawkins has been handing him chances at the Miss Black in the third frame, the most grievous ever so far from the Englishman. So it does feel like a must-win frame now, this one, clearly, just to stop the the juggernaut of Robertson heading towards the semi-finals. Yeah, Barry's left his traditional red to the right corner. You actually expect Neil to pot it. Must have heard me. Well, this is what Hawkins needs. Any sort of any sort of miss, any sort of failure to knock one in, because that could have been 4-0. Yeah, Neil from Barry. Yeah, just having a look to see. Can he get at the potting angle of the black? I think also just checking if he puts the back, will it stay on its spot or will it have to go down right. to the brown? Yeah, it looks a very bad miss, but... Barry Hawkins won. Mightn't have had the exact potting angle. Of course, it was very hard to resist it. No, and the problem is the way the match has started, everything is looking kind of tough now. You sort of almost have to take the chance, and it's not as easy as that, clearly. Not Neil Robertson's problem. He's, of course, been on the end of this himself this season, people playing well against him. He's got his own things to think about this week. Eight. Nine. Yeah, just gone from bad to worse for Barry. Didn't have much chance in the first two. It's in the last frame and this frame had a chance. Just getting compounded, the quality of Neil's play. And certainly if he goes 4-0, you just don't see a way back from Barry. I don't think it's far more likely to be 5-0. 16. Yeah, Neil's concentration today has been fantastic. Hasn't let up for a second. Again, he's aware the significance even of this visit again. He's on top. He has his man where he wants him. Just going to refuse to give him even an inkling of hope. Yeah, I mean, that's very much his attitude, isn't it? You know, he's won a ranking final 9 0 against Zhou Yulong. Absolutely no mercy shown. And that's how it has to be because if you, if you even slightly hold the door ajar for another top player, they'll force their way through it now then more reds here still it's a good pot here to continue
middle of the pocket. Just caught that red. 32. Still on this red, but it's just about position for the colour, I guess. And then fancy 4-0. Yeah, don't think he too much of the putting angle. Might have even played it trace aside just to turn it over. That's why he just played it pocket weight. Couldn't get too concerned with the white. Just wanted to make sure of the red. Again, another good putt needed here from under the side cushion. It was a lot more difficult to play at the pace he did. And a lifeline for Barry here. Yeah, just left himself with a difficult pot. Simple as that and just missed it. So Hawkins thrown a lifeline. talking myself and Fergal before we come on air who's the the best player not to have won hey. one of the big three titles the world UK Masters and we sort of narrowed it down to, to Barry Ali Carter and Karen Wilson other people might have other thoughts but certainly the current sort of crop of players they've all been in world finals Nine. and of course Ali Carter has been in a couple of Masters finals as has Hawkins Wilson's been in one as well but uh, at the world championship they all ran into Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final. Ali caught it twice, actually. Still time, of course, <laughs> obviously, but... 12. It doesn't help when you play the, the greatest player ever in the final of the biggest tournament ever. Barry in particular has a great record at the Crucible. Yeah, that's run for six years between 2013 and 18, where he'd won quarter final, four semis in a final. Again, you wouldn't be surprised if he went deep this year again. Very efficient player. 18. And he will need that level of efficiency here to capitalise and make the most of this chance. Has to win this frame. Okay, just taking a couple of seconds, debating whether to play a cannon or can he run round the angles off two cushions for the red back into the right corner. Slightly under hit that. Potting this red will be glancing the other red. Doesn't know exactly where the white ball will land, but just has to make sure of the red. Twenty-five. You just have to pot that red and keep the break going. Q 
you that well. 28. Again, we're going to see him play with the rest again. Like a lot of left-handed players, right-handed using the rest. I can't think of too many right-handed players that use their left hand when using the rest. But this will require good queuing. Went into 29. the side of the pocket, and as a result of that, you can see the white just went closer to the side cushion than he would have liked. Makes this black a little bit more difficult, particularly he's playing it with pace. We see Neil miss a shot similar to this, playing at a pace. Cue that very well. Lovely smooth delivery of the cue. 36. Back in prime position. Yes, and shouldn't need the brown, which obviously is a bit awkward where it is. Should be over the line before he gets down that far. 37. So in this frame, it was a Neil Robertson miss, although it has to be said it was missable, the black. The cue ball was tight to the side cushion. He just sort of lost ideal position. Oh dear. So another miss from Hawkins. It would have been nice down the black as well. Probably would have been frame over there, but not to be yet. So 12 points in it. Yeah, you could see by Barry's reaction. Obviously felt he didn't cue that particularly well. Was doing some practice swings as he went back to his chair. And as we said, this frame is vital that he wins, but you don't have to win it in one visit. Just needs this frame on the board. Get to the interval. Always regroup. Four nil down. It's very hard to see any way back. Barry just coming down to see he's going to play off the red and back down. Might have been looking at the possibility of maybe playing a back double into the corner. Yeah, that's always the danger. That shot is on, but if you get very close to it, you do run the risk of leaving the red, which he has. I felt the priority there was to make sure he got, a, got the red safe. Neil just looking at his options. If the brown wasn't in the position it is, potentially off the green, you could try and stun off the ball cushion, come round, or to trace aside. But that seems to be in the way of the path. Yeah, there wasn't a lot he could do there. Now, proud and playing a good safety shot. Most importantly, get that red safe. Yeah, 
think he's just having to look to make sure he's going to play the red more or less full in the face around the angles and just took that extra second to just to see the path that obviously doesn't want to hit hit the black yeah, just deciding if the red's going to avoid the black which side of it And this kind of shot the black can appear huge, a very big obstacle. <laughs> End up being so fearful of colliding Neil with Robertson the black. Six. Played a, at best containing safety. You feel if anything's given control of the advantage to Barry could potentially get a snooker behind the yellow here Feels like he's sort of clinging on by his fingernails here. Hawkins needs this frame clearly. Still be in trouble even then, but it's 4 0 and you just cannot see a recovery. He would need Robertson to completely go and he would need to kind of not miss himself, so it would have to be a complete transformation. Yeah, so he will need the brown, but not the blue. Yeah, that's significant. If he gets behind the brown, he can just roll it in, dead weight. Ten. Hasn't played that particularly well. It's hard to see how he can get close at all to the brown here. Might gamble on swinging it around the angles, but need plenty of power and avoid one of the other colours. <coughs> Again, if anything on the yellow should have overscrewed it, an angle on the green would have took him towards the brown. It didn't seem the angle was there. Particularly playing at the pace he wanted to. Okay, he's just trying to regroup. Don't carry any frustration to the next shot. Just somehow get this brown safe. He has to do that because the other three balls obviously are all there. Available. He sort of travelled maybe further than he thought it would. Anyway, the battle on the brown now could well resolve this frame. Yeah, with the blue, pink and black on the spots, playing the safe shot, there's always a possibility you get a snooker, but... The absolute priority for both players in playing this is to get the object ball safe. Yeah, Barry's 19-point lead is not much of an advantage. If he had one good pot here from Neil, probably win the frame. No, just overcut it. 
So Hawkins needs this brown. It's been a bit of an ordeal for him. He could have been 4 0 down there. Nearly threw the frame away. He'd be delighted to see that brown go in. He's got some sort of foothold. He's going to have to improve clearly in the second half. But he is on the scoreboard. Neil Robertson's had breaks of 127, two of 87. Nice. Had a chance certainly to win this frame as well. He'll be happy enough, the Aussie, at the interval because he's two away from the semi-finals as he attempts, of course, not only to win the World Open but salvage his top 16 position as well this week. So an interesting start and it is Neil Robertson who holds the advantage as the players go to the mid-session interval. He needs two more to reach the semis to take on either Ding Junhui or Hussain Vafai. Just a word, Fergal. I mentioned your swan song. You're playing in your last World Championship. What are your feelings about that? Obviously, the qualifying you're going to you're starting in anyway. Yeah, no. I Neil Robertson in a strong position here. He could have been 4 0 up, but 3 1. He's had breaks of 127, 2 of 87. Hawkins ended up scrambling the fourth frame on the brown. He needs to cut out the mistakes. Robertson clearly needs to press on and try and get this match won. He'll play Ding over Fai. Ding's 4 0 up on the other table. <laughs> well, the other table, they're not quite back for the interval yet, so I'm guessing people are coming back in and there's just a bit of movement. Similar to the previous frames, right at the start of the black in the open, just puts a little more importance on Players' safety shots. Again, both of them looking to get control. Both of them trying to play the first telling safety shot. Gain an advantage. Again, with that safety shot from Barry, that's just opened the reds. So straight away, the standard we've seen. Somebody can put the first red and get in the colour. Becomes a great chance. You wouldn't say Neil would be frustrated because he's three one up and playing very well, but he knew that was an opportunity to go four and up, more or less put the f match to bed. Yeah, I mean, the first thing is to try and win, but he, he, having played so well at the start of the match, scrambling through 5-4 later, clearly. It was a little bit patient as well. Of course, there's always the fear that your opponent will start playing very well. And if that happens, you'd like to have as big a lead as possible. Selected to play that with bottom to come back down the table towards the ball colours. It did make the pot a little bit more difficult. Maybe Barry, if he's feeling a bit more confident, would have just stunned across for the blue. Has left this red for Neil, and he can get round the back of the black. to 
wasn't sure. He got round the back of the black, had to play with a bit of pace, and that's just taken it past the bulk line. Just a safety shot. Neil Robertson, one. Excellent return there from Barry. Yeah, it was a good shot, but the cheering was not for that. It's for, it's for Ting <laughs> and uh, Vafai coming back, of course, on table one. You can watch that on Discovery+. Plus. Yeah, Neil would love to be able to pass the pink and glance one of the reds on the right-hand side of the table. Has to be careful, he doesn't catch it too thick going off or hit the green. Foul in the miss. Barry Not sure if he was fearful of that or maybe it was a very thin edge he had to hit. Don't think we'll be putting this back. Yeah, cue that nicely. Yeah, what he'd be looking to do now is win a frame with a big break. He's not done that yet, of course. The frame he won was a bit of a scramble. Got to try and put pressure on Robertson, who, you know, at 3-0, it was like a procession. It could have been 4-0. He just sort of lost ideal position when he was in, was left with that difficult black with the white on the cushion. Yeah, the Green's in play a little piece. That's why he's electing just to stun it. Normally would have tried to play it off a couple of angles, but the green was in the way, could have snookered himself. Quite a big margin for error in playing that to avoid ball colours. This makes the pot a little bit more difficult, a bit of pressure on it. Well, no point going into his shell, is there? Because Neil Robertson can scrap away with the best of them. He needs to get on the front foot. That's what he's doing. A couple of big shots already. That brown, the most recent of them. No, that was never going in. It was another big shot and it's not in. would have expected Barry still to pot that red with the rest, but the problem started. The previous red, he should have been perfect on a ball colour, which would have meant the position of play on the next red would have been a guarant guaranteed.
think the last red was a little bit short of pace on the blue. As a result, couldn't get too close to the red. It all depends on has he an angle on it. it looks to be, have a little angle that's bringing them towards the reds and the pink. Position of play not guaranteed. Seven. Play that nicely. Nice little can on the pink, just to cushion the white. Perfect on the green. Remember, this is Robertson's first quarter-final in a ranking event since December 2022. So, it's been a long time coming. But the signs are good. The way he's queuing, the way he's looking, the way he's focusing. And the way he's punishing as well. And let's be honest, he's been given openings by the mistakes from his opponent in this match. 26. But then you have to make the most of them, of course. And he has been doing that. He's just walking around the table there just to see his pattern of opening those four reds. I'm not sure if the bottom red of those four, if he got low on it, could he still pot it? Maybe not. Might be tempted to go into the four reds here. Every chance he'll end up on at least one of them. Thirty-four. Play that well. He's had to work hard Forty-two. for this opportunity. But now that he has this opportunity, we will expect him to go on and win this frame. We established that three frame lead. 43. Yeah, and you mentioned average shot times earlier. It's just under 22 seconds, which I think Robertson would be happy enough with. It's when he's got bogged down, isn't it, that he's struggled. It's not his game, all of that. This is his game. Making breaks and really imposing himself on matches. Yeah, not from my own experience in playing Neil. I want him to turn down long pots. I want to try and get him involved in a scrappy tactical match. That seems to be hand in hand. With a positive mindset and the average shot time being in the early 20s. And he's looking very good here. It's not quite the Sean Murphy stomp around the table, but at his best, certainly walks a great authority. 
Still needs a couple of reds here. Yeah, so it's looking like 4-1. And again, it came from a Hawkins miss, the opportunity. It was Mr. Red with the rest to this left corner. It's not happening for the Hawk today, I'm afraid. But Neil Robertson has had his own problems of late. He can't afford any mercy. He's pounced again. This is frame ball to be one away from the semis. And it looks very likely that he'll be playing Ding because he's about to beat Hussain Vafai 5 nil. Yeah, Ding was very impressive yesterday. Scored very... He played even better again today. That's a mouth-watering prospect against Neil. 73. Well, if he's to make a second century, this now, you feel the key ball, this red. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, when you see him play like this, it's a remarkable st statistic that it's more or less 18 months, he said, since his last quarter final. Yeah, and I think we've all been guilty. I certainly have of saying, well, he'll come good again. He's too good not to. But, of course, he's had to put the work in and he's had to deal with the sort of mental anguish around the results not coming along and people talking about the rankings and the qualifying and all that. That's all part of it that we don't see. So he's clearly got himself into great shape for this tournament. Well, blue and pink. Well, in fact, blue, just the blue now for the century. The second of the match for Neil Robertson. There's not great applause. D Ding's made one on the other table. I think people are watching that. But Neil Robertson will be delighted with this performance. Yes, Hawkins has missed and has given him openings, but Neil Robertson has taken them. That's the key thing. And he's a massive, massive favourite now to progress to the last four. 115 to go with the 127. He's had two breaks of 87 as well. Barry Hawkins had the chance. He missed the red with the rest. Neil Robertson has done the rest. He leads 4 1 and needs one more to reach the semi finals. So, frame six, Barry Hawkins needing to win this and then keep it going. He's in big trouble here. 4 1 down. But not only that, Neil Robertson has hit form this week and he's carried it on in this match. He needs one to take on Ding Junhui in the semi-finals of this World Open. Barry has left this red for Neil, but the fact he's so close to the cushion makes it harder to or nearly no chance of swinging around and avoiding the black. That's why he elected to play a safety shot. Didn't play particularly well. Has left barrier red into the left middle. Despite the mobile phone gone off, Barry managed to pot it. Nice on the yellow here to go back down to the reds. Yeah, I mean, it feels it's like 
sort of got to be no miss snooker now. And it, sometimes you see a player a long way behind, it almost frees them up a little bit. They just sort of go for it and see what happens. And of course, that can make them dangerous. Problem is, he has been missing in this match. Didn't quite get the reaction he wanted there. You can see gesture with his hand to try and get the white off the cushion. Would have liked to be on the red to the left of the black. Still has this red into yellow corner pocket. Never quite got into ideal position there, Barry and Venti cost him. The thin blue line. Not got much angle on the blue. Vital shot coming up here if you can pot the blue and just get that right angle on this red at the bottom. Doesn't want to be straight, I'd like to be a little bit low on it. Looks well. like he is straight, so then plan B. Leave himself low on the black to stun up into the pack. Thirteen. Well, if you're Barry Hawkins right now, you're concerned. What a beautiful split. Yeah, from the previous red. Elected to leave himself high on the black and couldn't have played it any better. See the white ball just arcing into the pack. And again, it's a fantastic opportunity. Like all great players, within sight of the finishing line, sprints over. Yeah, I mean, assuming he gets it one, 
it's not getting any easier. He'll have to play Ding, possibly Trump, to keep his top 16 place. But they will also be aware of how well he's playing. If he can win it in one visit here, you know, that is a very impressive performance overall. Yeah, from what we've seen today, you do expect him to make enough and win the frame and match here. And he's right back to his very best form. And similar to Ding this week, there's been a certain look and demeanor about him, very much businesslike. Of course, with them playing tomorrow, only one of them can make the final. Yeah, the two most successful ever non-British players. Ding's won 14 ranking titles, Robertson 23 so far. A lot more besides. And I uh, just want to mention Jackson Page again, because he's going to be in amongst all of this, isn't he? For the first time in a semi-final, rubbing shoulders with these great players. Fantastic week it's already been for him. Mark Williams said years ago, watch this lad, he's going to be something special. The most impressive part of Jackson's performance, I think, has been the two victories over John Higgins and Mark Selby, who you would have kind of felt might have had too much for him, caused him too many problems, but to be fair, particularly Mark Selby, actually dismantled him with his break building Tremendous performance, and he's backed it up again today, beating Elliot Slesser. Sometimes after a big win, a great performance, it could be very hard to play to a high level the next day, but he's managed to do that. And you could probably argue the case of the four players. Judd has had the least form this week. Well, meanwhile, he, he came a bit too high for the blue, so he's screwed back off the green. Now he's just shot here. He's now to have to. He's looking at the plant. All, all the reds otherwise are covering one another, so he just found an area there where he wasn't on one directly. He's looking to try and make this plant. He's going to play it. This could be Hawkins' last chance. In it goes. 41. Compromise slightly on the white. But again, one good pot on the black here. The balls are going to be on his mercy. Neil Robertson, 41. Yeah, it was a couple of shots ago when he took the green and just then lost position, had to play the plant. And this Miss Black was still unexpected the way he's played, so not over yet. It was important that Barry was in the chair. Even it might have appeared unlikely that you still have to expect your opponent to miss. So if he does miss mentally or in the right frame of mind to try and capitalise on that. Can you be relieved to have any sort of an opportunity to stay in the match? Would have been left-handed, just looking at that red, close to the left-hand side cushion. 
how appealing it would be if he could be just behind it. A little bit short of pace on the pink. Not sure if he has an angle on putting the pink to clip that red. was tricky enough pot couldn't try and too too much with the white Barry Hawkins 21 Barry just coming down the table to see and playing off this red to the right hand side cushion. Can he block the red on the left hand side cushion? Thirteen ahead, but he'd need all three reds also. Elected to play that as a shot to nothing. Just while we watch this, on the tour championship, which we've been talking about, the, the top 11 now is safe, so Mark Selby will be there. John Higgins knows that Hussein Vafai can't overtake him because he's been beaten. So if Robertson or Jackson Page won the title, they'd replace him, otherwise Higgins is in. So that's just tidying that up. Robertson's not through this match yet, though. He'd be annoyed, I think, if he has to go into another frame because he was sort of set for the grandstand finish before he just came awkward on that black earlier on. I think he's wondering, is there a position he can leave the white to snooker Barry and all three reds? That mightn't be possible. Again, he doesn't want to try and be too clever and leave Barry a chance at a long pot. His priority here is to make sure on Barry's next shot, he can't pot. Took 
a bit of a gamble playing the back double. Got a good white, but you're never sure where the red's going to go if it catches the jaws. That's worked out quite nicely. Similar problem here for Barry. This red clipping on the right hand side will be pushing towards that left hand corner pocket as we look. Doesn't want to leave Neil a chance at that. And because he was fearful of leaving the choice of maybe two reds, I like to just play a dump safety shot. Has left this red for Neil. And if he had one good piece of queuing into the middle pocket on a ball colour, should be the end of the match. But this is not easy. No, so what a chance for Hawkins now to salvage another frame. The match looked over earlier on, certainly, and had that red gone in, he surely would have been over. Thirteen. Just about had enough of an angle on the red. Just got past that bulk line. Well, something's going to have to go dramatically wrong to not be going into another frame. Nineteen. Robertson has played by far the best nuke of the match, but the match isn't done yet. And I guess because he's not been at the business end of a tournament for a while, there is just a slight danger that if Hawkins can certainly win the next frame as well, he might start to feel it a bit. Blue needed to claw back to 4-2. We've got three players into the semi-finals of the World Open. Judd Trump will play Jackson Page in the first semi-final tomorrow. Ding Jun Wee will play either Neil Robertson or Barry Hawkins. Robertson leads 4-2. It was 4-1. Well, there's some confusion. I think Neil is certain it's his break-off shot. <laughs> yeah, he, he was adamant he was going to break off because it is his turn. He would love to get this one to... Just coming up short in that last frame. By the way, just to say, we start half an hour earlier tomorrow. So if you're going to set the alarm, 
in the UK it'll be 6 a.m. And uh, Central Europe, 7 a.m. for Judd Trump, Jackson Page. Second semi final, the same time as before, 12.30 CET, 11.30 in the UK. and cut that red back. Again, exactly what Barry wanted in this round to get first opportunity. Side of there, I think playing the pink is going to glance off that red beside it, which might be potable if that happens. Digging into the white just to try and control a cannon off it. Play that well. Certainly, if he could win this frame, you'd feel he's right back in the match. And there's every chance when he's sitting in his chair at the last frame and Neil was at the table that he thought he was going home. He's got a second chance. And so long as he's at the table, Seven. he has control. All that well coming off the two cushions. Yeah, it didn't have a great angle on the black. Of course, playing to a pace. Fifteen. White went forward before it came back with the back spin. Probably a stun shot would have been better there. Yeah, didn't have enough pace or spin to get away from the reds. Gonna be slightly frustrated. Would have loved to Very open those reds and created a chance. Yeah, he just hasn't scored, has he, today, Hawkins? There's been no breaks to speak of, nothing over, certainly over 50. All been bits and pieces. But so much of the game is about keeping your resolve, keeping your belief, and uh, he's certainly good at that, Hawkins. Very level-headed character in general. Having said that, I, I mentioned earlier, he had to go to the World Qualifiers last year for the first time in a long time, and Jack Jones beat him. There's one moment where Barry banged the table with his fist, which, you know, if you're going to write out a list of people unlikely to do that, he'd probably be very near the top of it, but it just shows you in that environment, things can get to you. Yeah, you hear that about Barry in your first instincts is thinking that you're lying. <laughs> Well, of course, that's the environment. Robertson is trying to avoid that qualifying setup, but right now, it's, this match is more important than what's to come. Yeah, and obviously, we talked earlier about nobody's going to want to play Neil Robertson in those qualifiers, but the same token, there's absolutely no guarantee if he has to qualify that he will win his two matches to get through. <laughs> and there's a bonus there having that plant. One. 
desperate for any sort of an angle, which I think he has on the brown to get down the table, try and get on a red. I said he's an accomplished winner over the years, but the last 18 months or so has been slightly out of the winning habit. So it'll be a little bit more difficult to put such an important match to bed. He certainly doesn't want to drag it on any longer than this frame. Five. Yeah, and he's played well, that's the thing. You know, he's playing well enough to win the tournament. So it's just about getting this match done and focusing on what will be a blockbuster tomorrow night here in Yushan against Ding. I think he's looking at playing this red and obviously stunning down pink maybe disturb a red or two or he gets stuck in the pack six yeah managed to glance off the pack and more importantly didn't block the path of the black see that there's red close to the black the red beside the pink So one good positional shot could give himself another chance. Thirteen. Yeah, a rather loud ringtone, uh, just at a time where Robertson really needs to focus here. Twenty one. Twenty two. Still quite straight on the black. Enough of an angle that he could stun off the cushion. Twenty nine. Again, able to pot this red beside the pink for Bloom. Might be able to play in such a way that he can disturb a red or two. Thirteen. Didn't have to. Perfect position on the blue. Screw down for that red, it's in the middle of the five. Thirty-five. Yes, he could still have his big finish. It didn't come in the last frame. He'd like to end the match really as he began it with a big break, just to underline the quality of the performance. It's been the odd mistake, but overall, he'll certainly be taking the positives if he does get it won.
43. He's had a look at those two reds, just to the right, the pink, a couple of times. Not 100% sure if the one, the bottom 44. of the two reds will go into the left corner. The touching ball, the boat reds are touching. It's not guaranteed. Fifty. Played that very well off the two cushions now. Perfect angle on the black. Just a stun up and hit either of those two reds, you feel sure. Any contact, he'll be on one or both of them. So looks he gets high on the blue. Frame match at his mercy. Yeah, the blue puts him 48 in front. So another red and a colour required. Really focused hard on this visit. Last thing he wants is scrambling through in a decider. It's been a high quality display, not just in this match, but all week from Neil Robertson. But at the business end, you really, if anything, have to up, to up your game. 64. As you can see, this is the ball. Well, if you think of the World Snooker Tour as a giant WhatsApp group, there's been a lot of interesting things said all season by various people, but it looks like finally Neil Robertson has joined the chat. We've missed him, frankly, at the business end of tournaments, but it's going to be a blockbuster tomorrow night against Ding Jun Wee. Just once this red in, at the moment it's one snooker needed. Six in it, 51 on, but if the red disappears, then... There's no way back. Yeah, for a second to, to try and stretch over. And you could miss it that way, but as you said, once he just pots, regardless of whether he gets a colour or not, there'll be a handshake. And it's been an excellent performance by him, to be fair. <laughs> Very focused. Started off great. And even in this frame, 72. when he had his chance, business-like, Good control of the white. And again, set up beautifully for tomorrow's semi final. Barry Hawkins will be disappointed with a few errors from him. He has contributed to his own 79. downfall. But of course, he'll be at the Tour Championship, so looking good for a crucible seeding. Neil Robertson is chasing that, of course, needs to win the tournament. And he's playing the sort of snooker that suggests he can. He's had breaks of 127, two breaks of 87, 115, and that's 79 as well. Neil Robertson is into the semi-finals of the World Open here in Yushan, and it'll be a big, big match on Saturday night against Ding Junhui, the two best ever non-British players going head-to-head. -head. He's beaten Hawkins 5-2.